I'm Peggy Scott Laborde and welcome to Steppin' Out, spotlighting the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. Seated at our table tonight, Carol Babel, co-founder of the Ache Cultural Arts Center. Welcome back, Carol. Thank you so much. Good to Thank see you. you. Good Hello. To see you too. And Poppy Tucker, host of the weekly program Louisiana Eats on WWNO Radio. Hey, hey how are you doing? And making her Steppin' Out debut, Cecile Montaigne, actress in NOLA Projects. She's Maggie the Cat, current production of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof at Le Petit Theater this weekend. Welcome, Cecile. Thank you for Hello. having me. And Alan Smason, editor of the online Crescent City Jewish News. Later on, we'll be joined by Amay Hayes, production producer, artistic director at Southern Rep. She's a busy lady. She's here to discuss their current production of The Night of the Iguana, in which she also is starring in. She so he really is pretty busy. But first, let's talk about our special award. Oh, gosh. Last night, I was so fortunate in Lafayette to receive from the Louisiana Library Association their Literary Award of the Year. It was for the best book on cultural Louisiana content published in 2013. And I still feel like they must have made a mistake. <laughs> well, hold on. I'm like so that. honored. I can't believe they gave it to me in my Louisiana Eats book. Well, so congrats. Now, let's yeah. talk pig, Peg. <laughs> let's just go right into the pig, because it's hogs, hogs for a Cause. And if you've never been to Hogs for a Cause, it is a way to eat good and do really good deeds, because it's all benefits children's pediatric cancer. And for this weekend, City Park becomes City Pork for this <laughs> world-class barbecue event. Over 70 teams competed last year. And I, I'm a judge, and it's a really tough job, eating things like beans and sauce is one category, shoulder, whole hog, ribs, and something they call pork puri. And there's fabulous musical entertainment the entire time. There so many opportunities to eat delicious food. They're some of the winners from last year. There's some real celebrities like Rodney Scott and the Fatback Collective, Donald Link and his crew. Everybody who's anybody in the world of pig is there tomorrow at City Pork. Mm -hmm. I'll see you there. And then coming this week is something that happened for the first time last year. I attended a lot of the New Orleans mash tour. That's when Brooklyn Brewery comes to New Orleans to mash it up with our local craft brewers. It starts off Sunday at a dinner on the farm at 5 p.m. with Brooklyn Brewery chef Andrew Gerson and Dante's Kitchen chef Ema and Lubier. This is a delicious afternoon picnic. It's late afternoon, 5 o'clock it starts at Grodet Youth Farm in City Park. And it includes a farm tour and, of course, lots of beer. And then on Tuesday, incredible event at 7 o'clock. If you are into craft brewing, this is a place to be. NOLA Brewing on Chapatulas. Tickets are only $6. Brooklyn Brewery co-founder Steve Hindy is going to discuss the craft beer revolution with Kurt Coco of NOLA Brewing and David Blossman of Abita Brewing. This is an amazing thing, considering if you look at the main major money that America's largest corporate dynasties that are behind beer have held for years and the craft brewers have taken over the industry in so many ways and that's what they're going to discuss. Wednesday, you, you can go to MASH Beer School with the Brooklyn Brewery's technical director, Mary Wiles. Very unusual to find a woman in the business, and they'll be pouring some of the rarest brews at this free event at the Avenue Pub at 7 o'clock. And then, next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock at the French Market, the second ever Nola Vendi competition will take place. There's nine competitors, crepes a la carte, empanada infatata, food drunk food truck, foodie call, Frenchie's food truck, imperial woodpecker snowballs, la cosinita, Miss Linda, the Yakaman lady, and the Nola truck. Tickets start at $6 for admission, and you get a beer for that. It's a lot of fun. I'll be judging that event, too. Got a lot of eating to do this week. <laughs> then next Friday at 7 o'clock, there's a slow supper with Dinner Lab at a surprise location. That's last year's location. It was on a rooftop someplace in the CBD. I couldn't take you back there. It's the most incredible <laughs> fun thing. 
go to the Slow Supper if you possibly can. Everything ends Saturday, 2 p.m., a Brooklyn cask off at the Avenue Pub, pairing St. James Cheese Company cheese with beers. And then the fun continues with a closing party that's at One Eye Jack's, the Mash Bash with Marnie Stern. And it's at 8 o'clock and it's free. <laughs> Thank you so much, wow. Bobby. Lots of beer drinking to do this week. You really week. do. You're going to be pretty busy. <laughs> and we turn to Cecile in that fabulous red dress. Oh, Cecile, Maggie the cat. Now, you are you do a lot of improv. You're used to making people laugh. This That's is true. a far more serious role. It's much more serious, yes. <laughs> it's a little bit darker. Um, the stakes are infinitely higher. It's life or death for her. For well, there have been the three, what, three different productions of Cat lately. What sets it apart for you? Well, I think our production, um, it, there's a lot, to be completely honest, I didn't see the other two because I don't want to get super aware in my head, but yes. I'm aware of them and I read all about them. And I think ours probably has a little bit more humor than some of the others. Tennessee it's a Williams bit. can be funny. A lot it of people think it's funny. all dark and it's not. Isn't no, it? and in this mm -hmm. show, the, the, the most fun was on opening night with all the Williams Fest people, sold out crowd. They were just laughing at so much, which I wasn't prepared for. You know, when it gets a little violent or a little dark, they're like, that is so funny. And they would just start <laughs> laughing. Well, we should remind everybody that this is your last weekend to see Cat. Huh? Yeah, this is it. There's only three shows left, limited engagement. Now, I know you have performed at Le Petit Theater once before. What's it like to perform there now, these days? It's it's such a gift. I mean, to do that show in that space. So you're, you walk in, in off the French Quarter and then you walk into this beautiful set with these vaulted windows. And it makes it so much easier because you feel like, yeah, I am on the Pollock Plantation right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> And you know, Big Daddy, playing Big Daddy. He's And he's so big. You know, Randy's <laughs> wonderful. When he comes on Andy stage, Jeremy. sometimes people are like, ooh, because he's just, he's such a big man. Um, and we're, we also have a mirror in our production. So, you know, I'll be sitting there putting on my makeup and I can see everyone in the audience oh. behind me. So what's it like to play in a slip? Uh, you know, I will say it's very, it's very liberating. <laughs> I, I had a friend text me, he's like, if I only knew it was going to take $30 to get you to wear a slip, he's like, <laughs> and I was like, thank you, thank you. Well, tell us about your, uh, your other uh, life to, uh, in improv. Um, you produce and star in a lot of improv around town. Where can we find you? Well, hopefully? actually, I'll be doing a show with my duo, Machine on Sunday at 7.30 at the New Movement. And then no, next, where is that? that where is, is that? on Burgundy Street, 1919 Burgundy Street. All right. It's a comedy theater. And then the following Saturday, a show that I created and produced called You Don't Know the Half of It will be uh, Saturday night at 7.30, and that's at Cafe Istanbul. Now, what does that refer to? You Don't Know the you Half of It? You Don't Know the Half of It, what I do is I get four local writers to create a brand new scene. I give half the lines to one actor and half to the other actor. So the actor learns their lines, but they never see their cues. Mm -hmm. And then on the night, I pair them with an improviser. So the actor keeps saying their lines and the improviser makes up the other half. And it's really funny. Wow. You know, <laughs> yeah. I was at Cafe Istanbul um, a few weeks ago for the Sacred Music Festival, and that's a great space. It's, it's a nice right, space. it's part of the Healing Center mm -hmm. and near Cafe Fatouche. Okay. So you can get a little food. Yeah. yeah. And there's a bar right there, too. And if but you it's need to go pleasant. do grocery shopping, the co ops are right there. That's right. The co ops <laughs> there, too. It's a, that building is amazing in terms of all, you know, that can be done. Now, where did you study? I studied, I went to Tulane University. And green wave and then uh, right after graduating I moved to New York for four years and studied with the Atlantic and City Company and Upright Citizens Brigade and then I uh, went to London for a year and studied around there and then I came back to New Orleans so being in the show is a very big gift for me it's a wonderful part and I love working with the NOLA project so Absolutely. Those, those guys know what they're doing. It's a really good <laughs> show. Sure do, AJ, and you know, keep on going. And the partnership with the Williams Fest has been wonderful. Mm -hmm. To have people who just love that play come and see it all the time has been yeah. very exciting. Well, great. Well, yeah. Cecile has yes. another production coming up too. Plug, plug. What's the other production? Oh, <laughs> I got engaged. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Alan, you're feeding a line. We yeah, thank you. I was like, what? <laughs> and that's like one of the most difficult things to produce. <laughs> so I, uh, congratulations. Thank you. Any I got engaged yet? during oh, okay. the Orpheus parade. I was that 16 stopper girl who got engaged oh. during the parade. 
Congratulations. Yeah. Well, wonderful. That's Thank great you. news. Right. Well, Thank thanks you. for being with us. Thank you so much for having right. me. Come see Absolutely. Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Absolutely. Yeah. And we turn to, uh, to Carol. And it's funny because you should be in red. We're all in red Absolutely. because you're here to talk about Red Linen Night. You must have got the thought, at least. <laughs> huh? Tell yeah. us about that. Sure. Well, Red Linen Night is R-E-D-D, -D, and that is because it is a commemoration and a remembrance of our co-founder, Douglas Red, who was a visual artist, a fabulous visual artist here in New Orleans. And uh, we call it a um, art with a twist because we have 12 uh, wonderful visual artists and then we have 12 wonderful performance artists who are inspired by the visual artists work who will be doing performances that night. And uh, it's a great opportunity to celebrate something that Douglas uh, enjoyed often and that was installation. And so the, the whole notion of having the, the artwork installed um, and then have this performance, this active performance that's happening there. And then what it is that happens with folks. So they don't sit in chairs, they kind of walk around and spotlight kind of comes up here, this, thither, and yon. Well, I know we have and some images that we'll be showing you sure. too, some of the paintings. Sure. So uh, these paintings will be available for sale? Some of them are available for sale. We have a couple or three that are very special to the to the artists and are not for sale. Mm -hmm. But there are um, uh, visual, there's visual art that is available, yes. And it's um, it works at a bunch of levels. So clearly it's a great uh, opportunity for people to get together and to meet folks that they might not know. It's a wonderful opportunity to be able to see some of the work of masters as well as emerging artists and to really see what can happen inside of the kind of the inspiration of uh, two art forms kind of working together. And, uh, and then it's also an opportunity to be able to to uh, continue to invest in the work that we've been doing at Ashe because it's one of our signature fundraisers um, uh, going forward. So, uh, so this is kind of a, a magical night that works at three levels, and uh, community, culture, and commerce. Well, Carol, how long has Ashe been open? Now? Ashe has been there for 17 years now. I can hardly. Uh, you know, whenever I say it, I, I think something's wrong, that I need to go back and count again um, <laughs> or something. But well, yeah, it's exactly. been 17 years. Well, um, what I like is that there's so many events going on. When you go to the calendar and look at <laughs> um, your website, there's so many things. And you also have been very open to having other groups be involved, absolutely. too. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. I mean, the whole notion of being uh, kind of a center where, uh, you know, transformation and change and uh, all kinds of things can happen is that is being able to not have everything be about what it is that you're trying to present and so today for instance I left out and on one side of the uh, the center we were uh, sitting with people who were talking about growing compassion in New Orleans and this was a, a direct connection to when the Dalai Lama was here and then on the other side we had practitioners who were learning about trauma and how to treat it and so people kept running back and forth because they wanted some of both of what was going on on. And then that helps to influence like artists and the art that we wind up doing um, as we look at how we can aspire to becoming a better and a better and a better city. We well, you know we're coming off of uh, Tennessee Williams and a longtime th uh, theater director and writer is John Grimsley. John and I know John works with you on a lot of theatrical events. And, and so we, I would be remiss if I did not mention that this is John's brainstorm. This whole notion of Red Linen Night and this whole notion of art with a twist is, 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 his, is his brainstorm. And so he is busily running around with hair flying. Uh, hair flying, ready. long hair flying. Absolutely. And I, and I uh -huh. also would be remiss to say that he's a fabulous set designer. And so when people walk in tomorrow night, they're going to see like red, passionate red, like everywhere in every form there to also meet them. And now, Alan, another North Theater alumni, by the way. There are out absolutely. there, many of us here. You know, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Carol. Thank you. And um, back to Tennessee Williams for a moment because we've got Amy Hayes, who who is the artistic director um, of Southern Rep, but also you're in the play. I am in the play. Every now and then they let me get on stage, Peggy, and it's it's amazing. It feels like a vacation, actually, oh, wow. sometimes. <laughs> like, uh, so it's it's terrific to be in the Night of the Iguana. It's, it's No, I know fun. you all are still sort of in search of the permanent home, and maybe one day, okay? Yeah. But right now you're at a place called the Art Club. Tell us about that. That is correct. This is where we did A Streetcar Named Desire. It's on Elysian Fields, the 500 block. It's um, the Art Club, which we've transformed into the Costa Verde Hotel. So you can have a rum cocoa when you arrive. There's oh. even a hammock in the in the lobby if you want to lay down and, I don't know, think about Mexico. Um, <laughs> you can do that. It's really kind of a, an atmospheric 
production, and certainly it continues into the set. It feels like a rainforest. It's really beautiful. Well, I always marvel at someone who can direct and then be in a play mm -hmm. at the same time. So would, you're using different neurons and synapses here? Yeah, or? I think so. I, I uh, Well, I started off as an actor, so I've been acting since I was a kid, and directing is kind of a natural progression, I think, and it's, it's just something that I like to go back and forth on. And I think as a director, you need to act so you can kind of keep re-empathizing with what you ask actors to do, which is always nearly impossible. I think actors are incredible because of the difficult things that they do, so it's always... Now, the you know. movie, uh, Night of the Iguana, of course, is a very famous one with Richard mm -hmm. Burton. In, in preparing for a, a play like this, do you go to the movie at all, or do you avoid looking at other productions? You know, it's different. For When I played Blanche, I, I watched all of and the streetcars okay. about a year in advance. I did not watch um, this version of Night of the Iguana with Deborah Carr, who's fabulous. I've watched a couple scenes, but it, the movie is so different from the play. The play is so funny, and it's so rich with so many characters. The movie adds all sorts of characters and, and plot lines that aren't there. So I, I encourage people to come see the play because it really is the true story Tennessee wanted to tell. And you've got Troy Bechet in kind uh, of a non-singing role this yes, time. Yes, yes. Troy is tremendous. She is, I think Shannon says, you are twice, you are larger than life and twice as unnatural. And Troy is just, you know, she just embodies all of that. She's so incredible. And Mike Harkins as the Reverend Shannon, the defrocked minister, alcoholic man on a bender. And He's just amazing. It's an incredible cast of folks. Well, it's funny because when you see Troy on stage, you expect her to open her mouth to sing. And so this is yeah. one of those rare moments when she really does it. Uh, I know. We've, we've uh, cast her in stuff where she hasn't been singing. So it's always yeah, great to work with versatile. her as an actor. But mm -hmm. I'm always happy to hear her sing. So. Absolutely. What's next up for you? Next up for us, this is the last show of our season. And next up is our gala, which is going to happen June 3rd, hosted by the luminous Leslie Caste. Oh, yes. And uh, I think that's going to be a really, we're going to be, our theme for next season is homegrown Louisiana. So we're really kind of focusing on that next season, which we'll be announcing in about four weeks. All so, right. Any yeah. search of a permanent home or still kind of wondering We are, out there? I, I tell people, I think I've been through every warehouse and shoebox in New Orleans at this point. Yeah. We've got a couple things that we're always Good. sort of looking at, but it's that, it's that perfect combination of parking, location, is there enough room, and all that sort of stuff. The right thing's going to happen. I feel like we're getting close. I sure hope so. so Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and we turn to Alan, Tennessee Williams, and so much more. Well, we're really first going to talk about theater. Yes. Uh, the Big Easy Theater Awards. You know, once a year, the New Orleans theater community gathers for an evening of good food and fun libation at Harris uh, 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 Theater, and basically the Big Easy Theater Awards happen. It was a great show this past Monday night, with top honors going to Jim Fitzmorris' A Truckload of Ink, uh, No Love Project had put that on as best drama, and Southern Reps, of course, next to normal is the best musical. Harry Marone was the musical director playing behind a number of special performances from 42nd Street to Next to Normal, Dreamgirls, and even Evil Dead the Musical, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. Now, there are a few of the people who showed up. I want to show a couple of the pictures of the people who won, all dialed up and having a great time. There was Yvette Hargis, who won the Best Supporting Actress in a Comedy for Hell's Bells. Very glamorous. That was a, a takeoff yeah. on the Clint Eastwood movie, The Beguiled. Clint Johnson, he picked up the Next to Normal performance of I'm Alive. Uh, he did that on stage and then won that Best Supporting Actor in a Musical Award. Uh, also performing Pinball Wizard was none other than the Honorary Theater oh, wow. Chair, Michael oh, Cerverus, wow. who of course performed it on uh, stage uh, on Broadway, uh, the, the Who's Tommy. He came out and did, did that. And Poppy, I got to let you know, when he uh, came out for the first time, he came out in a coat made completely of kale. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he said so there. And in case you don't oh, know, wow. he lives here now in between oh. performing on Broadway and roles like Juan Perón and Evita. We have We were going to have him, okay. hopefully. Okay. Another big winner for the night was UNO Film and Theater Chair David Hoover, who won uh. not only one, but two awards for his direction of Rivertown's Noise is Off and UNO's production of Orestes 2.0. Veronica Russell won big for her role in Southern Rep's oh, Venus in Fur, which Amy directed. Oh, yes. Uh, double Big Easy winners were Mary Pauley, who won both as Best Supporting Actress in a Drama and Best Actress in a Drama for a role in Clyburn Park and a long day's journey into night. And meanwhile, Bob Eads Jr. there on the left got two big easy, uh, big easy awards for Best Cabaret in Miss Gulch Returns and his role in the NOLA Projects at Truckload of Ink. Also, Entertainers of the Year were none other than Kelly Fushi and Gary Rucker of Rivertown Theaters of the Performing Arts. Ian Hawk and Leslie Caste were the MCs for the night, and I was fortunate to be able to stand next to her at the conclusion as her official duties were over. Again, the last shot we have, and we want to give a big uh, shout out to uh, both Marie 
Lovejoy and John Broder. Marie, of course, is, is the executive director, her administrative assistant, John Broder, along with Margot Dubos, who's the executive producer, produced this wonderful affair each year with major help from Sue Gonzi. Now, let's talk about Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. The Tennessee Williams Festival is over, but you still have a chance to see Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, which closes this week. I believe that when a play comes along that's put together as well as NOLA Project's Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, attention must be paid, as Arthur Miller once had someone say. I've seen three previous uh, productions of this play, and over the course of the last two months, I have to say that this is unequivocally the best of the lot. Cecile Montaigne's the kind of Maggie the Cat that I always look for, an under six wanton and stealthy woman who finds a way to get what she wants. There she is playing up against James Yearg who plays Brick with the necessary underlying pain and suffering, and he's a, a brilliant performer in key scenes with both Maggie and Big Daddy, played by Randy Sheremy. Of course, Randy Sheremy has played Big Daddy before, just as he's played Tevye on several occasions beforehand. Sheremy really has a commanding presence on stage, and in Act Two, his seeking of the truth from his son leads him to discover a web of deceits and lies that abounds in that mansion. Mendacity. Oh, yes. And also, don't forget <laughs> Yvette Hargis there. She's a bit of a scene stealer as Big Mama. Here is a shot I took of the cast and the director, Bo Bratcher on the uh, left there. Uh, that was right after the opening night. Both Natalie Boyd and Andrew Vaught are seen in the right. They're also quite delightful in their roles, too. Unfortunately, uh, the play is, is going to only be on a, another couple of nights, Friday mm -hmm. tonight and, and, of course, tomorrow, Saturday. So you do have a chance to maybe get a ticket or two. Also, wanted to remind everybody about Elm Fest. Last Sunday, about 55 people showed up at Elm Fest. Uh, the Elm Theater, of course, is sort of like uh, Southern Rep in search of a new home. Uh, they left their roost on uh, Julia Street. There is is uh, Garrett Prejean talking about what's going on for next season. He also had Michael Cerveris come out and sing, believe it or not, oh, wow. to entertain the crowd. But here's their season for next year. A Lie of the Mind will be on uh, the board September the 10th through October the 5th. Enter Your Sleep, November the 13th through uh, November the 30th. The Naughty List in December, the 18th to the 24th. Then a one-act festival uh, in February uh, through March. And then uh, down the road, we'll complete their season. But that's uh, uh, pretty good considering the fact they don't have a home. So we're going to look forward to see that. And then a recap, if we will, of Tennessee Williams. Uh, just a tip of the hat to Paul Willis and his staff at the Tennessee Williams New Orleans Literary Festival. They did a great job. Excellent plays. The hotel plays, I think everybody said, was just so fantastic. That production in the Herman Grimma House was just a stroke of genius. I understand they're going to do it again next year. Everything's in place for that. So that's going to be great. Again, presented by mostly Boston actors was the gift of an orange. I wanted to show that uh, at the Herman Grimma House as well as the hotel plays. And uh, th they did that uh, in performance a couple of times this past week. And uh, also... I wanted to show people with a theater connection. Richard Reed of NOCA and Running With Scissors was on a panel called Spirited Tipplers. I thought that was wonderful for him to be out there talking about drinking. And uh, <laughs> last but not least, here is Poppy, Peggy, and Kit Wall <laughs> at Arno's Jazz Bistro getting ready to talk about New Orleans celebrations and food. I just and love that. Books. That it was, was fun. great fun. Thank All you. Right. Now, you were everywhere. I kept seeing you pop up. That was me. <laughs> and so was Poppy. Poppy <laughs> was, was on everywhere. two or three different panels. Anyway, many thanks. And now it's time, though, for our artist spotlight tonight. Tonight we're featuring Migration No. 14 by Caroline Wright. After earning degrees in visual art and art history from Brown University, Wright moved to Paris to pursue a career in fashion design. She collaborated with uh, dancers and musicians and filmmakers. She does that often, and she frequently brings viewers into her experience through performance art. She is represented locally by Martine Chesson Gallery. That's on Camp Street, where her latest exhibit, Unknown Landscapes, is on view through tomorrow. Visit MartineChasonGallery.com for more information. And don't forget to visit us at WYES.org to see our online calendar. New Orleans Magazine's quiz queen, Julia Street, has a question for us. Last time, Cheryl Selstan gave us the names of the roles that Elizabeth Taylor and Vivian Leigh played in the movie versions of Tennessee Williams plays. Maggie the Cat, Blanche Dubois, you could also say uh, the Roman Spring of Mrs. Stone, too. Now tonight's question. Though New Orleans has the Jazz Fest and the French Quarter Festival, two major festivals also in April are held elsewhere in Louisiana. One is in Lafayette, the other in Ponchatoula. What are they? Email your answers to steppinout at wyes.org. Our prizes, a Louisiana Life magazine subscription, a gift certificate for Vianne's Tea House, offering their culinary and gourmet tea experience for two. 
tonight we have an apron is worn by WYS production associate Kelsey Schreiber. The message, days of our chives. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to wearablevegetables.com for that. And also tonight we have John Kemp and Alan Flatman's brand new book, An Artist's Vision of New Orleans, the paintings of Alan Flatman from our friends at Pelican Publishing. And now our picks. Puppy! Don't miss the Road Food Fest with Jane and Michael Stern. They call it the NOLA Food Fest, but if you're a road food fan, you know Jane and Michael Stern from Lynn Rosetta Casper show Splendid Table. Okay, great. Carol? Um, Keisha McKee's Taken, which will be occurring at Loyola University on the Friday before Father's Day. All right, thank you. Ellen? This Sunday night, for one night only, come out and see a radio play titled The Yiddish Stunde, The Yiddish Hour. It's a play by Elliot Raisin, directed by David Kaplinsky and starring Suzanne Yee McKamey. And believe it or not, yours truly is the radio announcer. Oh, it's at the Shadow Box this Sunday night at the corner of St. Rock and St. Claude. Okay, Amy, website? Uh, website www.southernrep.com. Good luck with everything, Thank too. you so much. Yes. And now my picks. The Symphony Book Fair to benefit the Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestra is being held tomorrow and Sunday at UNO's Human Performance. Center. That's right there at Leon C. Simon at Elysian Fields, right next to the UNO Kiefer Arena. And the New Orleans Ballet Association welcomes Chicago's Joffrey Ballet. That's tomorrow night at the Mahalia Jackson Theater. Tickets are now available through Ticketmaster. And you see the number on your screen or at the theater's box office right there on Basin Street. And please visit NovaDance.com for more information on that. Don't forget, Bach Around the Clock starts next Friday at Trinity Church. We'll be talking more about that next week. It's on Jackson Avenue. And now, though, we leave you with scenes from last weekend's Stanley and Stella Shouting Contest from the Tennessee Williams Festival. Now, the first place winner is Eric Cusimano who will you see as the last contestant. So go past our credits and we see stepping out and check it out. Thank you very much for watching.